Alright, so all the major media that I have seen report on their timeline of events, they all start at 7.11, but that is not correct. The correct time to start at is 7.09 and 34 seconds, I would say. Because that's one we see that's where the connection is. And then two, we can confirm this very easily by looking at the 911 event log and comparing it to the 911 audio that we have. Okay? It's real simple. We can see here at 7, 13, and 12 seconds, the operator has entered into the computer, complaint will meet at the mailboxes of Complex. Well, we hear when that happens on a 911 call. So we just take that time. We know that at 3 minutes and 43 seconds, the operator has asked Zimmerman if he would want to meet at the mailbox, and Zimmerman replies, yeah, that's fine. And then you hear a couple seconds of silence, with possibly even some typing behind it. And at three, four, 3 minutes and 45 seconds into the phone call, we hear the operator say, all right, George, I'll let them know where to meet you. So all we have to do is take that time. We'll take 3 minutes and 45 seconds. We'll minus it from the 7... 13 and 12 seconds, and what we get is 7.09 and 27 seconds. That would actually probably be a few seconds more, because we don't know the exact when he hit enter on the computer. However, we know that it's definitely not 7.11, and we know it's closer to 7.09 and 27 seconds. So it's clear to me, then, the timeline of events should start at, at here at 7.09 and 34 seconds. So that's where we're going to start my timeline. Alright, so this is what I have for a timeline so far. should be noted that there's very little information available to the public to really establish who was where and what, so that lends to a lot of speculation. But what we do know, at least from the 911 call, is that the main gate is here, where George Zimmerman was describing the main gate, and this is the back gate then. We know that George Zimmerman was staying over here. We believe that Trayvon Martin was staying over here. We know that the crime scene happened around here. We believe that George Zimmerman's truck ended up here. And this is the clubhouse where he first reported that Trayvon Martin was hanging around at or something to that effect. Now, a couple of things to note here is that George Zimmerman was reported as to be going to Target, which is out the main gate here and up this way been reported that Trayvon Martin was going to the 7 or went to the 711 which is down the road this way so there are also a couple of little entryways between the townhouses aside from the gates everything else seems to be uh, fenced off here could it be possible that Trayvon walked through one of these areas is it logical to say that if George Zimmerman was going to target that he would just go up this way and he saw Trayvon Martin walk through one of these areas and that is what first caused his suspicion and then as Trayvon walked through here and went to the clubhouse instead of straight down the street George Zimmerman followed in his truck ended up here and then at 10.32 and 10.56 Trayvon is standing around this area kind of walks towards George to check him out and then walks back towards his destination. George continues to follow, ends up parking his truck here, and that's where he gets out after he reports that Trayvon is running. You can hear the car door close and get out. It sounds like he gets out of his car, closes the door. He says Trayvon is wa running toward, back towards the back entrance, the back exit. So could Trayvon have run down this way? Possible. Could he have run down this way? Possible. Could he have run down this way? Possible. All, all kinds of possibilities. One of the big questions, though, is why didn't he just continue home? How did he end up here? Uh, the other possibility is that George Zimmerman drove out this way and for whatever reason went down this road and up here and spotted Trayvon Martin over here. And then again at 10.32 and 10.56, he's coming towards me, he's coming to check me out, and actually passes George Zimmerman. And at this point, he says, at 7.11 and 39, he says, shit, he's running. 
again towards the back gate, which still could be down this road and through here or down this road and through here or even all the way around. Could be down this way and could be all the way down this way. We just don't know. But we still know that the crime scene ends right up in here. So one thing I'm not exactly certain on is precisely where the body ends up. I know that from the police reports that it's between uh, these two addresses right here and here. I know from later reports from Mary Kutcher, um, her, she says it happened right behind her house, which puts that there. However, from watching a couple of videos where they actually go on a little walk, they all, uh, the two videos end up actually between or right around these spots where the two the white things are in the ground. Whatever those white things are. So as it stands right now I'm just going to put the body right there. So one of the big questions that comes out of this is that if we assume that Trayvon Martin started running about here, the logical path he would have taken it seems is to go this way down towards his destination. So how does he end up here? That itself is only 143 feet or 43 meters 47 yards. If again we assume that he started running here and his destination is here and the logical path seems to be through there and we look at that we can see that that is only 185 yards 169 meters 554 feet if we look at the timeline and we assume that Trayvon Martin started running from about here to his destination here and that run started at 7 11 and 39 seconds we have to ask well how did the body end up here we know that George Zimmerman is on the phone for another two minutes and at least from the phone call it doesn't sound like he even states he doesn't know where the kid is he doesn't want to give out his address stuff like that so unless you assume that he actually has him there already and he's just lying to the 911 call I suppose that's a possibility other than that, if we assume that this is actually how it happened, we can see at least two minutes goes by to where his phone call ends. But it's also been reported as Trayvon Martin's girlfriend calls at 712. And she states that she hears were some words between them and a scuffle and the phone goes dead. Well, I'm only given 20 seconds then by the time that really happens. I mean, she doesn't, there's not a, a very much detailed reporting on what she says that she heard, but I'm just going to assume that she heard 20 seconds so or so worth of fighting, and then the phone goes dead at 716. So from the moment Trayvon starts running at 7, 11, and 39 seconds, and they actually meet, we actually have four minutes worth of time passed there. It really begs the question, if he started running here, what did he do for those four minutes until they met? How does he end up back here? He could have made made it past here in less than in, in, in less than fifteen seconds. Twenty well, was it the phone call that stopped him? Or did he stop before that and hide behind one of the fences behind the house? Well, we don't know. I mean if he ran all the way down here and went through this way it would mean that he went back up that way and any of these scenarios if he went all the way down this way and went back up I mean why does he go back this way when his destinations over here so then now what about George well if we assume then that there, again if we assume that the car is here and he gets out and starts going towards where he saw Trayvon go down then we can assume that he started here and went down towards this way. 
However, it was reported by his father that he continued down this path to get an address for the police. And we can also state here that he says at 7.12 and 50 seconds, he can still see his truck. So we know at 7.12 and 50 seconds, he's still up on this path here, assuming all this is true. Uh, and he's looking back and he can still see his truck over here. So we know that that happened at 7, 12, and 50 seconds. Let's assume that he's still on this path. His father reports that he went out and got an address off of one of these houses, probably this one, to give to the police when they are supposed to arrive and call him. So if we assume then that George is still on this path when he sees his truck, it took three minutes from that point for those two to meet up. One of the biggest problems that I saw in George Father's reporting on this, he states that they met where the, that George Zimmerman was heading back towards his truck and that the two met at the T in the sidewalk. Well, that's a problem. Because if I'm right in where the body ended up, here, how does George Zimmerman, after he gets the address and was walking back towards his truck, how does he end up down here? He would have had to have walked down this path if he, in fact, went back up this way. The T doesn't make any sense. The T's right here, and the body, as far as I understand, is about here. That's 57 feet away. Or, for you other folks, 17 meters. Or we can say 19 yards. So there's a lot of possibilities there as to what George Zimmerman is doing. If we assume that it's at 7, 11, and 46 seconds where he closes his car door and starts to walk where he thinks Trayvon Martin is walking towards the back entrance. And we look at their path here. Let's say it starts right about here. What could he have done? Could he have walked here? and made it as far as even, oh, I don't know, let's just say here. And started heading back towards his truck, thinking he doesn't know where Trayvon is at this point, that he probably got away, and then started walking back towards his truck up this way, and then they had their confrontation about there. Could that have been possible? Well, that's 307 yards, 280 meters, 920 feet. Could he have made that distance in the amount of time that we have? Well, if we start at 7, 11, and 46, and we assume they met at 7, 15, and 40, well, that's about four minutes. It seems to me entirely possible that it was a fact that George Zimmerman was heading back towards his truck, and it is quite possible that Trayvon Martin was hiding behind one of these fences and they just he started walking back towards home and they just met at that point it's even possible that Trayvon Martin was hiding behind one of these buildings and as George Zimmerman passed Trayvon Martin could have walked up this way and met at that spot well there are many many possibilities of how that could have transpired some of what has been reported from Trayvon Martin's girlfriend, uh, there has been very little. From what I understand that the state's attorney had something like a two and a half hour interview with her. So obviously there's a lot of information there. What we have in the news is very scant. But it's some of it is strange to me. Like she says that um, Trayvon, by the time she's on the phone with Trayvon, which is at 7.12... She says that Trayvon had said that he had lost the man. Okay, that's entirely possible. If he started running at 7 11 39 and got behind one of the fences or down in this dark area, it was very dark that night, just so everybody knows. Uh, or be, even as far as between the houses or something. Yes, it's, and it's obviously he lost him. Okay. But she goes on to say that she asked Trayvon to run and that he said he's going to walk fast. That he's, and she says, I told him to run, but he said he was not going to run. Well, we know he had already run by that point because he ran once before uh, she even called him. 
Why would he say that he's not going to want run when he already did run? Now, it's also reported here that although Martin initially told his girlfriend he wasn't going to run, he eventually did. She said, but the stranger managed to corner him. So, two things here. What is she saying? He, he, he ran twice? Well, if he made it down to this area when she called and he's hiding there somewhere or something, he ran again? And then, but that would take him away from the spot. I mean, how far is this, is he running? Doesn't make any sense. Um, and then to say that he was cornered. Well, I mean, it's a straight path uh, back that way, and it's a straight path back down that way. How is he cornered unless he was in between the fence there? That's the only way you're really going to be cornered. In another report, uh, the family's attorney, Crump, has a, like a, played a one-minute recording or something for the, the media. It says on here that he says, that would be Trayvon Martin's girlfriend, oh, he's right behind me. He's right behind me again. Behind him. So if it is fact that Martin started running from here and went down this way, and that's where he ended up, how is George Zimmerman behind him again? That would seem to uh, confirm that George Zimmerman did go back this way. Well, until we get more information, we can't be sure. And even in, even if we had all the information the state's attorney had and the FBI and all that, we probably still wouldn't know for sure. Because as far as I understand, there were no actual witnesses who saw any of this until the fight was already starting. So, other than that, we can just try to logically put the pieces of the puzzle that we do have together and see what we get. Well, well that's enough of my timeline for now. And maybe when more information comes out, I'll revisit this. Alright, so peace out, my brothers, sisters, and everyone in between.